You've already done the hard work, learned to code, studied data structures and algorithms, and maybe even landed a coveted FANG job. You've been writing production level code, building solid engineering skills, and yet when you look over at machine learning teams, you feel like something is missing. You see all the breakthroughs in AI and the impact that machine learning engineers are having, whether it's their work in recommender systems, robotics, or reinforcement learning. And you think, I want to do that. But here's the problem. You don't have a background in machine learning. And when you look up how to become a machine learning engineer online, all you find are roadmaps made for absolute beginners. You don't have years to start from scratch. You've got a job, maybe even a family. So how do you actually pivot? Hi, I'm Dan. Just a few years ago, I was in your shoes. I was a software engineer who made the jump into machine learning. Now I have been working as a machine learning engineer in big tech for the past three years. In this video, I'll walk you through how you as a software engineer can leverage your existing software engineering experience, learn the right machine learning skills on the side and make the pivot efficiently. Let's break it down. If you want to break into machine learning, you're gonna need two things. The first is machine learning knowledge, a solid understanding of ML fundamentals and the math behind them, and machine learning slash machine learning engineering experience. We'll talk about how to acquire that later in the video. You can and should work on acquiring both these things in parallel. This sounds like it would be tough to do, especially if you don't have prior experience in ML, but you can leverage your existing software engineering experience and skills to expedite both the process of gaining knowledge and gaining experience. Let's start by going over how you'd acquire machine learning knowledge. Most machine learning roadmaps on YouTube assume that you're an absolute beginner and recommend that you start by learning Python, followed by some Python libraries, followed by three math courses being Calculus 3, Linear Algebra, and Probability and Statistics, and only then do they recommend that you start learning machine learning and deep learning. Intuitively, it makes sense to learn this way, especially for the absolute beginner. And don't get me wrong, all those fundamentals are vital to being a successful ML practitioner. But given that A, you already have coding experience and maybe even a solid background in math, and B, you likely have a full-time job and other obligations, following these ML roadmaps will be counterproductive in your case. To borrow a concept from the world of dynamic programming, these roadmaps encourage you to learn bottom-up, where you first need to learn all the prereqs before moving on to the next thing. What I'd encourage instead is that you learn top-down, where you start with what you'd like to learn first, and then you learn the prereqs as needed throughout your studies. If you're a software engineer, this concept should already make sense to you. Think about it. When you onboard to a large code base, do you first start by learning all the functions and lines of code in that code base? No. You start by working on a task on that code base and then learning the specific functions that you'd need as you continue your work. If you've even made API calls on LLMs lately, you probably didn't start by first learning probability, then learning natural language processing, then learning deep learning, and then working with the LLM. No, you probably just jumped right into working with the LLM whether you understood how it worked or not. Still, you do need to understand machine learning fundamentals. So where do you start? I recommend starting with a survey of machine learning. Two resources come to mind. The first is the 100 page machine learning book, which goes into key ML concepts along with the math behind them. The second is Andrew Ng's free machine learning course. Both will be linked in the description below. After going through these courses, you're next gonna to wanna to build some machine learning projects. I'd honestly recommend that you start by implementing all the classic machine learning algorithms and also backpropagation. This will teach you a lot about core ML concepts. I'll talk about other ML projects that you can try later in this video. Now let's apply the top-down learning approach. If at any point during your studies or project work, you feel stuck or you don't understand how something works, then you should dive into the math behind the topic of confusion. For example, if you're confused about matrix multiplication, then you should look up a tutorial on linear algebra and also do some practice problems to solidify your understanding. If you don't understand distributions, then find the appropriate chapters in a probability textbook and solve some problems related to that topic. Keep doing this iteratively. Just make sure you're carving out some time each day for your study sessions. Remember, consistency always beats intensity. Even with some ML knowledge, you'll still need experience as the work that MLEs do is somewhat different than the work that software engineers do. Whereas software engineers build products and features in an iterative way, machine learning engineers work on machine learning models and algorithms following a form of the scientific method. One, come up with a hypothesis backed by thorough data analysis and or academic research, and two, test your hypothesis both offline and online, where the online test would be in the form of an A-B test. So if you're not currently working as a machine learning engineer, how would you gain this experience? Well, there are three possible paths that you can take to do this. The most classic way to make the pivot is to go to grad school. This can be either getting a master's or a PhD. Master's degree programs can be full-time or part-time, online or offline, where full-time programs can take about one to two years and part-time programs will of course take longer. A master's degree can be expensive and of course can come with a massive opportunity cost in that if you're a full-time student, you're not making income. To be blunt, most machine learning engineers that I've come across do have at least a master's degree. 
However, this is by no means a requirement, as most of these MLEs did not pivot into machine learning from a software engineering background. If you go the grad school route, focus on taking as many evergreen courses in math, machine learning, and deep learning as you possibly can. By evergreen, I mean courses that are math heavy and teach the fundamentals from a first principles approach. For example, instead of taking a trendy class on the latest LLM models, take a course on natural language processing. The field moves so fast that these trendy classes will be outdated within a year, but the fundamentals that you gain from your evergreen classes will stick with you throughout your entire career. And I really can't emphasize this enough, but if you're gonna go to grad school full time, then definitely get involved in ML research with a professor or with a research lab. Even if it's unpaid, it's one of the best ways to get real hands-on experience in machine learning work. You'll be working on actual problems, not just toy projects. You'll also learn how research is done, how teams collaborate, and how ideas turn into results. And if you manage to publish, that's a huge deal because not only will you contribute to the field, but you'll also stand out from the crowd when it comes to getting ML jobs. You can, of course, do a PhD where you do get a stipend to be in grad school. However, a PhD does take five years, so you'd have to consider the massive opportunity cost of taking this route. If you're looking to make a pivot from software engineering to machine learning engineering, then I personally think that a PhD is unnecessary. And you should only really do a PhD if you're really looking to get involved with machine learning research or if you want to become a machine learning scientist for an organization like Google Deep. But what if you don't have time to leave your job or time to spend years earning a part-time master's degree? Well, if you're employed in a company that is involved in active ML work, then why not make the switch at your job? There are many ways you can do this, but your best bet would be to find an ML adjacent role and transfer into that. For example, if your company has its own ML training platform, it likely has a team that works on said platform. Working on ML platforms is very similar to software engineering work, where at the end of the day, they're just building a product for machine learning engineers to train models on. Yet, however, by working on this, you get to learn ML technologies and frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow. And on top of that, you'll also get to work closely with machine learning engineers and study their workflow up close. Even if your company does not have ML platform teams, you could still leverage your software engineering experience to work with ML-centric teams. What do I mean by this? Most people who work as machine learning engineers come from either a data science or academic background. So while they're phenomenal machine learning practitioners, their engineering skills are often lackluster. In fact, I often heard that it's easier to teach a software engineer how to be an ML practitioner than it is to teach a data scientist to be a proper engineer. Now, this is where you come in. Can you productionize a pipeline for an ML team? Can you improve the quality of their code base? Can you solve a really annoying on-call problem for this machine learning team? If you do this, not only will they be grateful, but they'll likely offer you mentorship in machine learning. And if you express interest to them that you like to pivot into ML work and you tell them that you've been studying machine learning on the side, they'll especially be likely to help you out and to maybe even offer for you to help them with some of their machine learning work. This can be your big break into gaining machine learning experience, which you can leverage to get a full-time machine learning job at your company or to apply at a different company as a pure machine learning engineer. But what if there are no machine learning opportunities at your company? In that case, you're gonna have to apply for ML roles at other companies. I'd recommend looking for machine learning engineering roles at startups or smaller companies, as they'll be much more likely to take a chance on you. However, that puts you in the position of needing to land a role on your own without having ML experience. So this is where I recommend that in addition to your typical studying, you work on extra projects to beef up your resume. There are three types of projects that can give you the most bang for your buck. The first is doing Kaggle challenges. The second is implementing academic machine learning papers. And the third is just working on some large scale ML project and a topic of your choosing. Examples, making a stock picker, maybe even training AI to play a video game, up to you. If you made it this far, congratulations. You now know what it takes to make a successful pivot from software engineering to machine learning engineering. And it won't always be easy, but with enough perseverance, you can make it happen. I believe in you. If you found this video helpful, then I'd love it if you subscribed. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll make sure to answer every single one of them. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.